Good evening. Hey there. How you doing? I'm Khalid Jamad. I'm a community associate at Community Board 9. Hey Khalid, how are you? I'm good. And yourself? Good, thanks. All right. So I'll just be in the background mostly. The committee chair will be, you know, be the one conducting this. Great. All right. Hey Alex. I think we also got Alex there. Hello. Callan, I got I got one question as well. On the agenda, we didn't see uh Rolf Henry. Um he was is he supposed to speak tonight? No, Rolf Henry is a is a park design uh that we were gonna review. Okay, I'll just add that. Um, okay. you know, when I put the agenda up. Okay. I spoke with Dante earlier in the week um about it. Okay. So I'll make a note of that. Thank you. Thank you. Yep.
Hi, Denise, Rachel, and Sarah, and hi, Alex. Um, I think we're, we're just waiting a couple more minutes to get started. Okay. Hello, hello. How you doing? Hi, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Caleb. Just a moment, good row. evening. Two days in a row with you. Yeah. If, if we can get a sec, someone take the notes, could you do the same thing for me for this meeting? That's what sure. I'm trying to overlook in here. No problem. All right. I think we could go with that. Uh, where are we? Oh, Miss Mormon is here. Pleasure to see her. How are you? Oh, you guys cannot see. I'm good, thank you. How about you? Yourself? Oh, it's a pleasure. Good. So, all right, let's see. We're going to try to get an idea of who's here and um, see if we got a call and get started as quickly as we can. Khalida, I want you to put as a skills one of the community resident member. Naima Wood, she said she won't be able to make it tonight as excuse. Okay, that's part of the roll call. All right, we'll wait a few minutes and see if how many people are walking. So we're about eight. Uh, we need some more board members. So if you see any board members coming, you could identify them board members into the list of participants. Meanwhile, let me look for the agenda. Um, okay, I'm looking for Jerome is here. Hi, Jerome, how are you? Hey, thanks so much for having me. I'm I'm here with uh, my classmate and uh, professor, but we, we definitely appreciate you welcoming us. And Oh, yes, you guys are more than welcome. So, Thank I mean, you. this is the kind of collaboration the community board is looking for. So, Fantastic. if you don't mind me asking, do you live you live in community board 9? Uh no, I'm actually on the community board 3 Bed-Stuy, um mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, with my um, program, we're doing a, a lot of research that we'll, we'll talk a little bit about uh, that um, encapsulates Community Board 9. Okay, sure. So welcome again. Okay, the other person I'm looking for is from Brooklyn Botanical Garden, Ethan. I don't see Ethan here. We're supposed to get it started. So people are slowly coming in. Uh, oh, this was September. That's uh, not what I'm looking for. Hold on. Thirteen. Oh, Ethan. 
I see you come in. Hello, how are you? I'm great. How are you doing? Doing Thank well. You. Thanks for Check having me. In. You know, you always welcome Faculty Christian and Culture Committee. You're one of our steadfast cooperators. Yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. So, uh, uh, yeah, it is now 7 05. Um, we want to see. Khalid, were you able to identify any other board members? Um, let me go and look for the Courtney. Roussel. Courtney, yes. And I'm uh, so busy. Our vice I chair, I was supposed to call her before then, but things got complicated a little bit. Because originally I told her I was not going to be here, but in the end of that, I'm, I am here. I'm leaving tomorrow instead of today. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, one second, let's go to minutes. That's not the one we want. This is the one we want. Okay, 13, 14, very good. Okay, let's see. Um, I'll go Somebody on. with a number that just joined, they need to identify themselves, the 347. Yes, this is David Romeo. David Romeo, one of our members. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Do you, you, you have a list of the work, uh, Khalid? So we could, uh, uh, I'm about to call this meeting to order at 7.06. Okay. So let's call it at 7.06. And I know also community resident members way out there outside the country. Ms. Uh, Pagan, Hawkins Pagan is not here too. She had told me she won't be here. She, uh, yeah, so we could mark these two people excuse. So uh, why don't we go roll call to see if we have a call. So let me call this meeting to order at 7 or 6 p.m. So you could start recording. Okay, it's recording. Um, Matthew Fulton. Okay. Abina Hutchful. Courtney Lucelle. It's Chloe Lucelle or Lucan? I'm sorry? Is it Lucan or Lucelle? Okay. Lucelle? Is she here? Yes. I'm here. Okay. okay. How, do you, how do you say your last name? Or? Lucelle. Lucelle. L-U-C-O? Because no, I'm not the name. S-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. Yeah, I haven't missed Okay, we'll got to make the correction. I think that's one connection you're going to make before I do that. Because what I'm going to do after the whole call, we're going to know that the minute of the last meeting and make the necessary correction and move forward to we'll all of those minutes. Keep going. I'm sorry for the interruption. Julia Bryan? She's not here, too. All right. Chloe Lucen? Lucan? She says she's here. Mm -hmm. sure. Next. Okay. So um, that's, that is all I have on the list. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So do we have five? How many people you have present between myself? Yeah. Do we have five people present? At least we need the. Yeah. Maybe. Yes. Yes. Okay. So the quorum, we have 10, so the quorum will be six. So um, it doesn't look like we have a full quorum. 
But nonetheless, we could go ahead and do it. So let's note we only have five uh, board members and community resident member present. And hopefully by next time, we're going to correct it. Either we're going to have to have new members or appoint uh, new members from somehow so we could keep the, the quorum. Okay. So now for those members that are here, I'm going to try to share my screen with the minutes. Uh, you should have received them as an attachment for the meeting. Members, community board members, did you get a chance, got a chance to read them? Yes. Yes, it was, they were compiled by Ms. Courtney Loisel. She will keep the way. Okay. So uh, anybody else? Uh, Ms. Gloria Bruce is not here either, right? Uh, should I be like that? Okay, so let me see if I could share my screen and um, and see what correction can we make. And then now uh, in the meeting, then we'll probably have to wait until we get a quorum to report to the meeting. Just give me a quick moment. Let's go here. Let's go. Let's go back. All right, uh, Khalid, would you give me sharing privileges? So we could go do that. You should be able to share your screen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just give me a second. Okay, so. Can you guys see my screen? Yeah. Everybody will see my screen. Let's see what, let's make the correction. I think in here we have David Rubio. It should be what, David Romeo, right? Yes, I'm here. Okay, uh, they had Rubio, so we have to correct your last name. David Romeo. R-O-M-E-O. -E correct, so that's one correction. Uh, can I make it there? And uh, I've been a hurtful not here. Chloe Lucan, is your name spelled right? Chloe? Do we have Chloe here? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think everything else is there. And of the guess. Uh, this is the more or less what was reported. If it, is there any addition, deletion, or any changes you say we should do? So. I want to move to the next page. This was the and this is what we did in our business. And um, so with this, so any correction? I did a pull and review it. So any corrections? <coughs> All right. Seeing none, I'm going to make a movement that we approve the minutes for the members of the committee present. Do we have a second? I move that we approve the minutes. Is there anybody want to second it? Mm. Yeah, committee members. I don't know if I can second Nicholas, but I, since I'm the one that write them, wrote them, but I will, I will second. Oh, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Okay. <laughs> All right. Are there any discussion? If so, let's decide. Uh, for all that approve, not, uh, notify by saying aye. 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 Anybody else? Any abstention? 
If you need exemption, state your name for a record. Seeing none, the minutes are approved as presented with the correction for David Romeo's name. Okay, so let's move on to the next order of the agenda. <coughs> Let me stop sharing. And this, we should share the agenda at this point. Okay. Yeah, so welcome greetings. So what I would like to do, let's do the introduction. So uh, we'll start, why don't everyone introduce themselves since we take care of the housekeeping and then we're gonna move right to the presentations, okay? Uh, I'll call on you if you guys don't mind. Uh, Mr. Davies, Davies Eves. Yeah, Davy Ives. Thank Davey you. Davy Ives. So I, 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 have a, I have a French bag one. I think it's <laughs> okay. That's <laughs> yeah, fine. So introduce yourself. <laughs> that's that's all good. I just good evening, everybody. My name is Davy Ives. I'm the chief of staff for operations uh, at New York City Parks in Brooklyn. So mm -hmm. working with. Um, as you guys are well aware, Alexandra Mormon, who's on the line. Mm -hmm. um, we have a team from our our um, our design office that's here to present the design, the proposed design for the Rolf Henry Playground. Uh, so we have that presentation queued up. If if you guys want to go through that now. Um. <laughs> Yeah, why don't, uh, no, before I do that, I want, uh, I'm going to let the announcement from Pratt because they, I think they have something pretty short. Okay. Let's do that. And uh, why don't we go to Jerome? And, and, you are, and you could just go ahead and present what you are doing. Jerome? Great. Thanks so much. And uh, I'll, I'll keep it brief. I'm a community board member myself, so I, I know how, how long nights can get. Uh, reintroducing myself, my name is Jerome Nathaniel. I'm a student at Pratt. No. As to my classmates to also introduce herself. Hi, uh, everybody. My name is Mom Warder, and I am helping Jerome out tonight. Hi, everybody. My name is Jack Travis. I'm a professor here at Pratt Institute in the Urban Planning and Placemaking Department. Glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you for that. Great. Go ahead, uh, Jerome. You have the floor. Yeah, great. Thanks. So um, I initially reached out, as I shared, I'm one of 17 students at a Pratt Institute program. It's a studio. Um, and we've been doing research um, on a specific location in Prospect Park called the Leopard's House uh, that you may be familiar with. And I saw in the minutes that you uh, mm -hmm. may have been familiarized with it uh, last month. Uh, mm -hmm. But essentially, we've been conducting historical research dating all the way back to indigenous Lenape communities in the area, um, all the way uh, to today and getting a better understanding of the neighborhood. Um, mm -hmm. As we're fast forwarding to today and really thinking about uh, how um, uh, we can uh, really use our research to um, uh, think about what what um, how can Prospect Park sort of um, uh, rethink uh, the uh, Leopard Center, uh, Leopard's House rather. Uh, we knew that it was important to really uh, engage with community members. So uh, naturally, uh, the community board uh, came to our mind. Um, at this point, we've uh, developed um, a different uh, sort of catalog of different outreach approaches to collect feedback from the community. Uh, we're still sort of uh, refining and thinking about the best approach as, as a class and with our professor. Uh, but I did want to reach out today uh, to share my email, um, invite people to share their contact information if they're interested in being contacted uh, for the input uh, to be uh, incorporated into our sort of uh, community um, research. Um, and I'll also reach out to, to Nicholas uh, when uh, we sort of finalize uh, you know, what approach or what kind of um, outreach tactic we're going to use to collect community input. Yeah, adding to that. Yeah, um, adding to that, we just want to know what people sort of, what kind of, what are their opinions on the Leopard's House? Have they visited the Leopard's House? 
And you know, what are what are your thoughts and perceptions about that that particular part of the area? Um, and we want to like sort of start talking for educational purposes, just so we can, you know, because none of us are really from that area. So we really want the opinions of people who live there, who go past it, who maybe talk about it. And that's like very important. Um, <laughs> Hopefully, we'd like to get some contacts, uh, people who you might think beyond your uh, board and your subcommittee who might be interesting people and personalities to speak to. Uh, we know that there's a wide range of um, situations and conditions in the community, and we want to be aware of all of them, from homeless uh, people and to business people and to uh, people who are uh, dealing with non non nonprofits and community assistance. So uh, we're open. Thank you. Uh, are there any questions? Because you understand you guys wanted to set up a, free, uh, a focus group, but what I'm going to suggest is that send your information to the uh, board office. If you could, I would suggest probably if you could put together a flyer that would put in an email blast and asking people that be interested in participating in part of your research. So we'll circulate that among the uh, our listserv and see what we get. And hopefully you guys can come back and give us a much more information about that. So Definitely. I don't know if the chat is active. Some of our Zoom are not chat active. So people, if they can access the chat, they could put their information in the chat. Otherwise, you could send your information to the board office and then we'll send it. We'll send that information to you. Okay. Perfect. And we'll follow up with greater details about uh, the final, you know, set of questions or our formatting for how we're going to input. Um, I would say in the next couple of days. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. And I'm just going to move straight uh, at the end of the presentation. Why don't we go to Ethan? So the Hogan uh, Botanical Garden who has a presentation ready for us. Yes. And we'll finish up with, uh, with the parks department. Excellent. Thank you so much. And I will be I will be pretty brief as well. Um, is it uh, would it be possible for me to share my screen? All right. I just, let's hope so. College should be able to give you that access. Yeah. Great. Um, but I'll 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 start anyway. Um, so you know, really I wanted to come down uh to the board and make sure you guys know um not only that our uh winter spectacular lightscape is coming back. Uh, for its second year. Uh, it's going to be opening up next week on the 16th. Um, but like I said, I'm not just here to let you guys know about that. Really, the purpose of my visit is, you know, we did get a lot of feedback last year that the price of the ticket was a little bit high. Um, it is a $40 ticket for entry. Um, and, and you know, we, we get that that can make it a little bit inaccessible. Uh, you know, of course, the garden has a lot of free access programs that, that I've come and talked to you guys about in the past. Um, but so one thing that we did this year uh, for Lightscape is we created a 50% off community ticket. Um, so that's going to be a $20 ticket uh, to try to make that um, you know, experience a little bit more affordable for folks. Um, and the way that we're doing it uh, is a little bit interesting. We didn't want to create a system where we had to verify where folks live and all that kind of thing. Um, so we've created um, you know, sort of a special portal um, that uh, I've shared with the board office and that link um, to this portal is going to be uh, sent out in the community notice tomorrow. Um, and so, you know, you're going to see a link and there's going to be a special access code. That access code is CB9. It's going to be an easy one. This is for, you know, the folks who live in CB9 primarily. Um, and so you'll be able to um, get that from the, the notice and, and see where uh, you know, how you can get that. And now I've got the ability to share my screen. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, is show you guys uh, exactly how to do that uh, really quickly. So I'm going to pull up that page right now. Uh, all right. And can folks see that now? Yes. Okay, so this is, it looks uh, just, sorry. The writing is a little small. Maybe you can increase the font size. Yeah, okay. Oh yeah, let me see if I can do that. <laughs> um, no, that didn't do it. Um, so, 
Yeah, so, so this basically looks like our regular ticketing page, but you can't access this uh, by going on our website. These are our special neighbor nights uh, where we've got these 20% tickets available. So you'd pick one of the three nights where we're offering these tickets. Let's say you wanted to come next week on, on day two. Uh, you'd go in there, you'd pick your time. Let's say, you know, I want to I wanna get there at 6.15. Uh, and then you'd hit tickets. And this is where it gets, this is sort of the, the key part of it. Uh, is in order to do it, you've got to <laughs> enter, uh, you've got to enter your access code. And so for folks, that's going to be CB9. And then you hit submit and it says your access code has been accepted. Uh, and then you go through, uh, oh, well, I need to see, select my number of tickets. So I wanted two tickets. And then you can go in there uh, and you could see that those are those $20 tickets um, and all of that jazz. Um, so now I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Um, so that's the process. Uh, like I said, look out tomorrow uh, for uh, the link in the community board's um, uh, e-news. And uh, please come out uh, and enjoy the show. Um, oh, and before I, I, I give it up, I'll just remind everyone, we are officially um, pay what you wish during the week now. Uh, so if, if you've got time during the week before 3, 3.30, I believe we close, um, come on down. You can come in for free anytime. And so hope, hope to see everyone at the garden soon. Thanks. For Thank the, you, uh, Thank We'll you. talk soon. Unless anybody have any questions? Uh, any questions for Ethan? Is I don't have any garden? questions. Yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. um, but I just appreciate the, the opportunity to have a cheaper um, ticket. And I did go last year and I thought it was really awesome. So. Thank you. Awesome. Any questions? Comments? Inquiries? So I uh, thank you very much, Ethan. <laughs> uh, we should be talking soon, probably. Not, not next week, the week after, but whatever else. Great. We, we and the community board and the board of the will cooperate in terms of activities and programs. Excellent. Thank Looking you very to much. Go. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. You're nice more than you welcome again. to continue and attend the meeting. And then right now, let's move to the parks department regarding the proposed reconstruction of the parks at the corner of uh, New York Avenue and Clarkson. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Else is, is Thank you. Here. Thank you, Nicholas. And uh, one more thing, just for the, the Pratt students, I know they signed off, but if they need any contacts at the Prospect Park Alliance, um, if there's any way that we at the Parks Department can help, just let us know. Happy to help facilitate that. Sure. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, both, So just want to say thank you guys for, for taking the time to listen to us tonight and, and see our presentation. Um, I, I want to introduce the team that we have on here tonight. Um, so my name is Davey Ives. I am the Chief of Staff for Operations. You probably know Alexandra Mormon, who's our, who's our uh, Park Manager for District 9. Um, and I just want to introduce also, we have uh, Denise Mattis, who's the, our Design Director for all Brooklyn design projects at Parks. We have uh, Rachel Kramer, um, who is a senior landscape architect. And then we have Sarah Toth, who's gonna be the project landscape architect on this job. Um, additionally, we also have Carmine Ramondi from our uh, partner group called Partnerships for Parks. So um, if you or anyone from the community are interested in forming a friends group or getting act connected with volunteer materials, Carmine is your guy and, and Carmine, we can get you Carmine's details, contact details to, to share um, later if you want. Okay, so now, um, I don't know, Denise or Rachel, maybe do you wanna share the screen for Sarah? So maybe Sarah, you can still see our faces while you're presenting. Whatever is easy for everyone. Oh, it's, yeah. uh, I'm going to just turn it over to you. And so okay. it's your presentation. So um, but one thing before you start, as you, you can feel free to share your screen, um, Nicholas and, and other Parks Committee members, um, we are looking for a letter of approval tonight. Um, I'm not sure how Community Board 9 does it, whether we do a, a letter of approval from the Parks 
chair parks committee um and then it goes to the full board for a vote or you vote on it in committee and then um you know also get that final stamp of approval so um defer to you guys on on what's best and what what community well let me allow uh, if you allow me i'll tell you what the process is Great. we will first approve it and refer it to the executive committee that meets next week we'll do their presentation say we have the presentation this is what we, we are recommending that the letter be written probably most likely be written by the office and then the executive committee will put it on agenda for the general board and there you also have the possibility to do a presentation also before the board vote on it completely. Okay, that's great. Um, so if if you want us to come back and do another presentation, just let us know. Uh, yeah, I would, yeah, I'm going to strongly suggest that we have you back at the general board meeting. Okay, which is I think the third uh, the, the third Tuesday, uh, the fourth Tuesday, the third or the fourth Tuesday. I don't remember of this month. And okay. I'm, I'm, that's going to be virtual, and then. Uh, I'll put, I'll put, I'll ask that you guys be put on the agenda for your presentation during that meeting. Great. All right, Sarah, I'll turn it over to you, so. And thanks, thanks, Davey. Good evening, everyone. My name is Sarah Toth. I'm the designer for Rolf Henry Playground. Uh, it's been funded in part of the Community Parks Initiative by Mayor Eric Adams. And uh, I'm just gonna dive into our in-progress design. The goals for this project are to spatially separate children and caregivers from other park users, increase play value, program active and passive spaces, and increase safety throughout the playground. Um, we're familiar with the neighborhood, but um, Rolf Henry is in uh, Prospect Lefferts Gardens. It is uh, across from Kings County Hospital Emergency Room and Psychiatric Center and diagonal from SUNY Downstate Medical School, and will sit adjacent to Clarkson Estates development in the future. Uh, as I just mentioned, the site is near public facilities and institutions, but there are multi-family residences and one and two family homes just north and south of the playground. Within a 10 minute walk, there's Winthrop Playground and Wingate Park, both of which have a lot of active recreation available and there are they cater to five to 12 year old children. We conducted a sun and shadow study to understand how the development of the Clarkson Estates will impact the site. And what these graphics tell us is that during the spring, summer and fall months, the site will be in shade after 4 p.m. Our site analysis tells us that the play equipment is outdated, needs to be replaced. Um, there is some vehicular activity at the northern property line where we share a fence line with the gas station. Uh, there's heavy uh, vehicular traffic along New York Ave and Clarkson Ave, and there's also uh, pretty heavy pedestrian traffic on this intersection. Uh, we conducted a tree inventory. Uh, all the trees on site are uh, healthy and were rated pretty highly. So we will not need to remove trees due to design or condition. Here are some photos of the site. To the left, we have the entrance, the center and the right are the comfort station. The bucket seats on the left and the concrete sundial on the right. Some photos of the play equipment. This is uh, what I'm calling a viewing garden because uh, there is a four foot high steel fence around uh, this planted area. So you can't really interact with it. Um, it is separated from, from the public. And on the left, this is an image of the steel silhouettes that lined the northern fence line of the park. And we kind of took some in, in, uh, inspiration from these silhouettes, and we'll see that in just a little bit. On the right is the condition at the um, gas station to the north of the playground. During our community input meeting and um, our in-park tabling session, attendees um, 
wanted us to provide a variety of uh, seating for children and caretakers and childless users of the playground, um, update the play equipment, provide a small splash pad for children, um, refurbish art. And this is our schematic plan. Uh, the triangle, the triangular shapes and the geometry are a result of us prioritizing the health of the mature trees on site. Um, we wanna keep those uh, trees healthy and happy to provide shade throughout the summer, uh, the spring and the summer. Um, and uh, these triangular areas are programmed for play. Uh, to the south is uh, two to five steel play equipment. Just north of that is the ground play and tot seating. Uh, there is a blue color seal coat track that rings the uh, expanded tree bed and the spray shower. And uh, in, the up, in the upper left, there are seven foot high swings. And this is a little detail of the pavement. Um, we were inspired by this image of uh, birds taking flight at the horizon. And so we're going to achieve something similar to this by applying um, color to the asphalt pavement and then continuing that pattern um, vertically up the uh, fencing that separates the swing and the ground play. Um, so along the fence line will be these um, small panels that have um, a marble in the center and children can uh, run their hands along these panels um, and have a, like a, a tactile experience that encourages movement. Here's an image of the play equipment. We wanted to uh, provide some, some uh, fun, vibrant opportunities for children to play and learn. The spray shower will have three gentle uh, jets to provide relief during the summer months. We'll be um, lowering the fencing along Clarkson and New York Ave to four feet high to create a more inviting experience. And then using two foot six and three foot high fencing throughout the playground to uh, distance children and caregivers from the planted beds and any utilities that might be located within them. We'll be supplying um, uh, uh, several opportunities for seating with um, backless benches and benches with backs, top tables. We will be providing lighting in the playground. There currently is not any lighting. Um, and we'll be providing a new uh, drinking fountain and updated trash receptacles. Here are some images of what the fencing will look like. The planting will be uh, quite simple along the fence line at the north. Um, we'll be providing mid-sized shrubs to screen the gas station and then keeping things low and colorful in the other two planted beds. Here are some of the plants we've chosen, a lot of shrubs uh, and perennials for seasonal interest and color. This is a bird's eye view of what the playground will look like. And this is our schematic plan. And I'll, I'll end on this and I'm happy to take any questions or comments Hello. Yes, uh, go ahead. Well, if you like to uh, with question, you could use uh, the raise hand function, and then we'll call you in the order in which uh, your hands were raised. Mm -hmm. Does anyone have any question? But I have a couple of questions. A question I have is that it was a study made of to get an idea who, because in that area, you mostly have downstate Kings County. It's only right now you're getting a lot more residential people coming into the uh, 
that, that close area. Do you have any idea what kind of population frequent the wolf and we play well? Where do they usually come from? And uh, is then also the other question is how often this park is being used in terms of quantity? Is there any way to find that out? Because we, a lot of people are, um, from, from what I understand, are not aware too much of that park, a playground land. Yeah, the, the users, so during our community input meeting and when we were in the park tabling, um, there seemed to be uh, a decent amount of caregivers with younger children, mm -hmm. like children in the two to five age range. Mm -hmm. um, it seemed like the older children were, were uh, visiting the other two playgrounds in the area. Mm -hmm. um, the, the play equipment sort of caters to that age group. Mm -hmm. okay. um, no, I'm not, I don't have any information about the frequency of use. Um, David, do you have any info? On yeah, that? no, I think I I think you know you, you hit it basically spot on, Sarah. I think most of the people that you know will go to Wingate or um, you know maybe up to Lincoln Terrace or if not Prospect Park um, um, to use this in the district. Um, you know, it's not well used right now. I think you know we saw, like Sarah said, caregivers are most younger people. We hope that you know maybe adding a bit of color to it, adding brand new play equipment and kind of sprucing it up, you know, because I think it's it's an old park. I think that's that's without question. So it definitely needs a little bit more of a facelift. Um, you know, I think you 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 did mention that you know people from the downstate facility um, you know, are kind of walking past it. So that's why we did put benches on the outside of the fence. I think there's also a, a bus stop nearby um, to kind of also allow people to sit and, and reflect under, under a tree in the shade, but not have to be kind of front and center in the playground. Um, Thank you. Kali, yeah. I see you raise your hand. Go ahead, you have a question? Yeah, well, first of all, I want to say the design looks great. Um, hopefully it is something the committee can get behind. But I had a question on what goes into a park being renovated? Um, how does that like decide it? Is there like a study you go around and, you know, during your studies like this park is something that needs to be renovated in the community? Um, I, maybe I can jump in here, Sarah, if you don't mind. Um, sure. So, so this is actually part of what's called our community parks initiative. It was something that was started under the De Blasio administration, actually, um, and, and this mayor has has continued that program. Um, it's designed to uh, rehabilitate and kind of just breathe fresh life into into parks and, and playgrounds and communities that really need it um that that haven't seen investment in a long time so I, I forget the last time this park was renovated i want to say maybe 30 years ago something like that um so you know it definitely you know the play equipment is designed to the you know we feel confident that play equipment you know every 30 years gets changed out so that 30 40 year 20 to 30 year mark is is kind of where it gets um renovated. Um, we can share some information about the Community Parks Initiative. I think we have some on our website, so maybe we'll send you some links. Um, but basically, it's it's this site, you know, we don't have a, a set capital budget. We're just kind of at the, at the mercy of uh, elected officials, you know, whether it's the council member, uh, borough president, or the mayor, um, to fund parks. So the Community Parks Initiative is a way for us to get funding into parks that really need it. Um, this, and it also to serve communities um, that, that um, you know, are in need of, of parkland um, from not only a parks perspective, from a demographic perspective, from um, socioeconomic indicators as well, so. Thank you, Davey, thank you, Sarah. And anybody else? Because I think uh, what I want to say, one of the uh, projects we've been talking about, we've been thinking about in the park of recreation is to, to develop a park assessment tool. And we're trying to 
see to create a one Saturday to do to a various part to find out what's going on, what is needed for the whole community board. I think this information is definitely going to be helpful. Uh, please send me the information regarding the park initiative. I'd like to go and look a little more into this particular background information. So we could, because we would love as a community board to be on a periodic basis, a tour of all the parks of the park experiment to see what has been done, what needs to be fixed, that needs to be corrected uh, or remedied. Uh, so uh, that's something we definitely we're going to work in to put together. That would be um, great. happy to send it. Yep. Yeah, yes. Um, can I say something? Oh, absolutely. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. um, about two years ago, prior to the pandemic, the past um, park commissioner took some members, um, Ms. Morgan and myself, on right. a trip of all of all the parks in the community, CB9, you know, under the CB9, in the CB9 area. Mm -hmm. And he was discussing, you know, the plans for each park. Right. Now, uh, because of the pandemic and, you know, the monies, et cetera, et cetera, a lot of the projects seem, you know, I mean, to be put on the back burner. Mm -hmm. Now, that park in question um, at, at New York and Clarkson right. is, you know, an yeah, I mean, he mentioned the lowering of the fences, et cetera, to make the park more, you know, welcoming. But that park is a very small park, uh, you know, if I, if I remember it correctly. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not very, very big, you know. But um, the thing, what I want to say basically is that he was saying that that is something that should be continued. So to jump at your point, um, I think you know if we if we could arrange for you know a visit of all the parks, well, you know, one, take one day, you know, mm -hmm. because that's something I think you know. I mean, the, the community board members need to physically go out there and see the parks. You know what I mean? Um, one of the one of the things they were saying is that he's going to the kiddie section of Wingate Park was already done, right. the basketball mm -hmm. section was done, mm -hmm. and he was going to you know um, do we do the seating area next to the field. Mm -hmm. I don't think that has been done. Nice. So, you know, mm -hmm. I, you know, I think we should actually arrange to physically go out there and look at this stuff. But exactly, that's exactly what I want the committee to do. I've been, I've spoken to Councilman with Joseph and Assemblyman Cunningham have been the same idea. What we need to do as a committee is to come up with a date and time that everybody, that is convenient for everybody. And I know Ms. Morgan is definitely going to be along to do that because the idea is to visit all the parks on one day and in addition to the parks, the community gardens. And uh, I already mm -hmm. spoke to Council Member Crystal Lawson about the same idea. Now the question is, is for the committee to design it, plan it, and choose the dates for us to do that. And I think definitely that's one of the activities we want to do for this year. So, because I did speak to Ms. Morgan this week, but I was supposed to call me back. I wanted to really discuss this particular idea with her because of the uh, organization Friends of Wing has been very active. So, you and I are uh, we're on the same page on that. Feel free to talk to me some more. So, because I need, I'm looking to see if we have a couple of people in the committee who wants to take the leadership and put that, to put this activity together. So we could figure out what data mm -hmm. would be convenient for everyone to do it. That is mean all the members of the committee or any member of the community board and all the elected. So we could mm -hmm. have having a flyer, have a schedule and all the stuff. So so thank you for yeah. confirming that. Okay. Yeah, no problem. All right. Are there any other questions? for the parks department. I, I think that's it. I think Sarah did a great job, you know, making making a lot of the ground spaces also play spaces by the the different striping that we did. You know, there's areas for kids to run around and, mm -hmm. and different things. So we're really proud of this design and, and looking forward to it. All right, so I.
Thank you guys very much. We're going to, Sarah, you could stop sharing so we could move on to the rest of the agenda. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much for your presentation. It was quite informative and interesting. I like the idea of all the colors you bring in it. Okay. All right. Moving on. Uh, do we have any other presenters? I think we covered everybody. So right now, this is the time for public commentary. Are there any public commentaries? Well, you know, since since we have the um, the guys who design in parks and stuff like that, there is a, a park that, you know, um, the mark and um, I can't remember that small park on Sterling behind the Atwell School at the corner of New York and um, Empire Boulevard. Oh, yes. It's, uh, uh, I'm trying to remember the name. I, I visited that it, park. It's Mark, it's Mark and something else, you know? It's, it's, yeah, it's Mark. Two names. Okay. Right. Um, you know, the, the playground area where they have the swings and, you know, for the kids is good. But there's an open space and um, the, the parks commissioner was letting us know that the city is responsible for that space. Okay. There is a, um, the, the, the court there, you know, it's, I don't think they did anything in that park for t more than 30 years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the kids play, play there because it's, you know, it's for the school. Mm -hmm. And the basketball, the, the, the court is, there's cracks in the, in, in, the, in the concrete. There's grass growing in the cracks. Mm -hmm. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. You know. You know. I'm. I'm hoping they could do something to update that park because not only school children use that park Monday to Friday, but you have. You know. The community comes in and use it on Saturdays and Sundays, etc. You know. Mm -hmm. Um. And it's in need of some sort of repair. So right. uh, again, once once we make that trip to go and visit these parks, you know, I think that's some of the things we need to. To put in place, um, Mr. Myrie, Zelno Myrie, his office is around the corner in Nostrand right. Avenue from mm -hmm. that park. So I don't know if we could, you know what I mean, speak with him and see if we could get him to, you know what I mean, try to get some money to make some repairs, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, you know. If I may respond, definitely, because I myself did a personal tour of all the public mm -hmm. community two, three months ago, and especially that mm -hmm. park, a lot of pictures of, see, of the stuff I saw going on because I started with Winford Park, Wingate Park, Metz Hamilton, the community garden, Jackie Robinson. Mm -hmm. I just took it on one one Saturday. I personally went to that and document as much as I can. And that's what inspired me to see we have to have the whole community working to with the elected. And Zelma Wiley definitely will be one of the person who's going to have to join us to do that. So it's up to us, the park committee, to put it together and get them, and then we'll get that done within two me within the next two three months. Okay. So okay, good. Uh, what you talking about? I've seen it myself because I said, let me go and see what's happening in all the parks as chair, so to so to get myself educated said what needs to be done. Okay, Nicholas, let, let yes, us know. Sure. That's a great idea. I think David. I, I think I was also on that original tour. Um, Okay, with right. You know, with Commissioner Mars, <laughs> I remember it well. Um, yeah, you know, we can we can hop in. We have a van too, so you know, if you have a number of people, we can we can go from site to site and take an afternoon and take a look at this sort of stuff. Right. Um, you know, a lot of it is kind of a brainstorming where you know, if there's cracked basketball courts, um, you know, you know, there are some things that we can do in house. You know, if it's a if it's a fence that's damaged or if there's a, a maintenance issue that needs to be addressed, some of that stuff is can be tweaked in-house, um, but some of the conditions like cracks in a basketball court or um, you know, new play equipment, stuff mm -hmm. like that, that requires capital funding from your elected officials. So, you know, I think the projects that right. we yeah, yeah, the the the, the right. projects that yeah, go ahead, David. No, 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 exactly. I, I agree with you, right? Yeah. And, um, you know, and I think that's one of the things we have to get the elected officials involved, you know, in terms of, you know, to, to get us some money to get these projects done. And, you know, um, I'm just sitting down here trying to brainstorm how, you know, and when 
probably if we make in the tour of the parks, if we could include one or two of the elected officials with us. Yeah. You know what well, I mean? You know. Well, I can say, David, I already get commitment from Cunningham that he wants to do it. I spoke to him about it. Right. I spoke Mr. to him to Joseph. She said she would love to come about it. So now the question is, is to work out the logistics to do it. Like, for example, I've been in the block where I live on the block where Winthrop Park is. And uh, there's a problem with the fountain. I have a granddaughter that goes there every day. And usually in the summer, you get a lot of mosquitoes. It may be something where the parks department in has can go and fix the, some of the problem within that park. But nonetheless, we need to go. And I think the winter is the right time mm -hmm. to do it. So by the time summer comes along, whatever work can be right. done quickly to remedy the situation can be done. And if there's any figures that will require much more funding, then the elected can go and look for the money to get that done. So exactly. the, the committee exactly. to organize it now, and I'm hoping within the next two meetings, we get something together and a day to do it. Okay, good. Okay. Um, uh, we move from, uh, now I want to move to uh, part of the agenda, since we don't have too many people here. For the people that are liaison uh, uh, for the different cultural institutions, I wanted to see if I get any reports from them. And I think, uh, let's see. Um, I'll see if any of these people are at Is there anyone here from the uh, years a member of the committee that requires a lot of us? We may have to postpone it for the next meeting. So, uh, um, Courtney, Courtney, I mean, do you have anything to report for us from the Brooklyn Children's Museum or the Wellness Center? No. No, okay. I think you're the only one here that's present. We're gonna to have to leave that for the next meeting to do that. So um oh, let's see an agenda. And uh since we don't have everybody here because we wanted to put together a the list of the projects for the next fiscal year. One of them we've already been speaking about is a community. Uh, the, those were the two of the different the parks in there. And also one, one of the projects is we wanted to get a resolution for the community fair. Since we don't have too many people here, I'm gonna table all this discussion for the following meeting. And uh, what I like to do, one of the things I wanted to introduce today is that uh, for the members of the committee, I was thinking maybe we should cancel the meeting in December and we convene in January because there's so many activities going. So members of the committee, I don't know what you guys think. And I'll, why don't you guys speak that on that? Do you think we should cancel next uh, month meeting? And now we convene in January. Hi, Nicholas. Um, it's Courtney. I would support that. Um, I know it's a busy time of year for everybody. Okay. How about David? What do you think? Uh, um, you know, yeah, I, you know, I would support that, but you know, <laughs> Christmas, Christmas month is such a hectic month. Um, it's quite hectic. And, as you say, a lot of activities. So I, yeah, I would support that. All right. So then uh, let's put it on the notes that uh, there's, there's a large support to cancel the meeting for December and our next meeting will be in January. So we will pick up where we left off and try to get as many of the plans as possible. Um, I don't have anything else to add because I think some of these projects and event, I think what we're going to do in between, we'll have informal discussion and see by the time next meeting comes around. So we have uh, some very specific plans because for some of the project and plan, we have to go and put together a budget and send it to, to the board for some of the things we're doing. So are there any old business? 
Anybody have want to bring any old business? How about new business? We did receive um, an update about um, a question that was raised last week from um, from Felice Robertson, who I don't think is here tonight. No, she's not. Um, about the trash pickup on the edge of um, Flatbush with the mm -hmm. uh, botanical garden. Mm -hmm. um, I can send this along maybe to be shared uh, with the committee and Felice. Okay. So you have that information on that? Yeah. Is it something you can share now? Is it something in writing you could send and then we'll add it as an addendum to our minutes? Yeah, I'll send it in writing. Um, but she was asking about trash pickup. Um, and um, it was indicated that the Department of Parks and Rec is responsible for trash management in that area. Yes, on um, the west side. So that's the parks. What was and the cross streets? And uh, is this is Flatbush Avenue between Empire and uh, Granami Plaza. Because I also did have a conversation with people from the botanical Ethan that was there. That, we did have a conversation about that too, yes. Because and uh, Grand Army Plaza is actually not mine, but I can find out whose area that is and see why it's not being taken care of. Is, okay, uh, is we it, appreciate that. Is it the, the Flatbush Avenue entrance to Prospect Park where the yes. garbage is accumulating? Yes, especially okay. once you cross Empire. It's that working that. on the west uh, working on the west side of Flatbush. Yep. That area tends to be a lot dirtier. In the park than anywhere else because I walk it, around the park every day. It's it's the part uh, by the carousel, the entrance by the carousel. Yes. The well, it starts from the Leffert's house going all yeah. the way to the to to Ganami Plaza to the bus stop or in the where the public restroom is. And and what was the issue you're having? Just issue trash pickup. There's really a lot of trash in that 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 stretch. Yeah. Is it is it trash that's bagged up or is it just loose trash that needs to be? It's loose trash, usually okay. loose trash. Okay, so maybe what I can do is I can alert our, our crews in Prospect Park. It's a different, it's not Alex's team. It's a different team that, that would handle mm -hmm. Prospect Park and Flatbush Avenue mm -hmm. um, and just let them know, ask them to see if they can, you know, switch some things around so they can put a crew on it to look at that area. Okay, appreciate that very much. Yeah. yeah. Because the other side is the botanical garden. Ethan, that was there, we had a conversation this week where I mentioned the same thing to him. He said, yeah, we're gonna to try to look into it to make sure. Because okay. That, those, that street, usually that stretch is pretty, can get to the very. I think the botanical area on the east side tend to be dirtier than the west side because I was the park almost every day myself. Yeah. So. Okay. Thank you. Let's yep. go to our parks department and our meeting. <laughs> Happy to help. Thank you, thank you. All right. Guys. Okay. Uh, I would move that we adjourn. Is there, I'll put the motion. Can I get a second? Because I don't think we have any more business to bring up. And uh, in between those meetings, so uh, I will have conversation with the different members and then to see what we could do when we meet again in January will have plans and ready to go for the rest of the fiscal year. And one of them project is out in the schoolyard project. We're, we're, we're gonna work with the education department and PLG arts. And so we need to be able to flesh them out and try to see if we could come up with specific action and, but, and if there's a need for money, put together a budget that we can submit to the, the district managers. Okay, is there a second for adjournment? Yes. Okay, thank you. So the meeting of the Park Recreation and Culture Committee for November is officially adjourned at 8.02 p.m. So I wanna thank everybody for being here and look forward to see you guys again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks Have everybody. Happy holidays. Have a good one. Yeah. Okay, everyone. Bye. Okay, okay. Bye.